Hello, my name is Kurt Schwer, and this is Research Tools Video 18 on Python. We'll be covering today HDF5 using the H5Py library, the NumPy library, and the Matplotlib library. And this is a class, uh, Research Tools, for the UNH Center for Coastal Ocean Mapping Joint Hydrographic Center. So let's go ahead and get started. And we'll be using the bathymetric attributed grid or bag format as our sample data today. So let's go ahead and first start off by getting IPython going. So just type IPython, press enter. And to make sure that we log everything that we're doing, we actually want to start up a script called, or a magic function in IPython called start log start. And we can either leave the percent on or we can take it off. We can use a question mark at the end of that to make sure that we can get some help before we start up running it. Let's press enter. And here, log start has got a couple options. We're going to want to turn them all on so that we can see as much as possible with what went on with our session. So we're going to want to give it all the options. If we scroll down here, we can take a look at them. The dash O option says um, we want to output or write the output of IPython, the results of each of our things in there. Dash R for log raw says log what we type. So if it replaces things, it's going to not actually do some funniness of replacing things like this. So you see actually which type. And dash T for timestamps so you can see sort of the progression of things. Now we also want to use the log mode, which is described up here. And we actually want to use append to be sure that we're not overwriting some other file. So let's go ahead and set that up. So we'll say log start dash o dash r dash t, those three options we'd like. And now the file we want to write out to, so video 18 log.py, so it's actually a almost runnable Python script. And we want to append. So hit enter. And now it's told us that it's gone ahead and set things up for us and is now logging. To double check that, we can say ls-l, we'll see if there's a video log file, and we can say bang to run a bash shell script command, which is head, and video press tab, hit enter, and we can now see that it's starting the log and it's now off and running, complete with timestamps. So let's go ahead and pick up our data from NOAA. So here I've got Firefox running and I've gone to the NGDC or National Geophysical Data Center website. And what's here are different classes of survey types. And the ones that start with H are hydrographic surveys. So let's take a look in the newest hydrographic surveys. So it's been updated October 17th, so not too long ago. And in here, each one of these directories is a survey. And let's scroll all the way down to the bottom, grab the newest, and let's go in the 12279 directory. Now, if you're running this at a later date, you most likely will see a lot more surveys in this directory, and so you'll have to go find 12279 to follow along exactly. It'll be hiding in the middle. So press Enter, or sorry, click. Now, in this directory, there's going to be other things in addition to bags. There might be just uh, reports about what's going on in there. There might be all sorts of other data. But let's go take a peek in bottom samples. And here there's a KML or Google Earth file that you could take a look at for where bottom samples were collected. And we're going to actually go look in the bag directory. So in this particular survey, there's only one bag. And the file naming convention that NOAA has recently adopted starts off with the survey number and underscore. Then the VB stands for vertical beam, which is in our other vocabulary it might be called single beam. So it's just a sonar ping straight down and it isn't a multi-beam. 4M is the grid cell size, so 4 meters. This is the vertical datum, mean low, low water. And one of one says we only have one bag. If there were many, it might say one of 10. <clears throat> dot bag is our format extension, which is just a convention. And then GZ implies that it's compressed. So let's go ahead and copy the link. So control or right click, copy link location. 
And I'm going to now hide that. And we'll go in here and we'll say in our IPython shell, we'll say bang to go back to shell wget. And then I'm going to go ahead and paste in that URL, press enter. And it's going to go grab our bag file for us. The file size varies quite a bit. So if you pick a different bag, it may be much larger and take much longer. So let's uncompress it. So we'll say bang to run another shell command. G unzip and star.gz, press enter, and ls-l shows us that we now have our log and we have our bag that we're going to work with. Now I always do this just for safety and so that you can follow along later on and see if the bag is the same one that I downloaded. So let's start off by inspecting it a little bit with shell command so we can say file h12 tab and in here we can see that it's a hierarchical data format or HDF version 5. Now if it said version 4 the software to read that is not the same. The format changed fairly drastically between 4 and 5. And we can also then do bang md5 to run md5 sum to run a checksum on that file to make sure that we know which version we used. So there's the checksum and if this checksum has changed between when I did this and your version, then there's two most common pro possible things that happened are one, you got a partial download, so the, you only got a bit of the data, and so you might check the file size here to see how big it is. You also might make sure that the gz uncompress, so the g, g unzip actually worked, so that there's no .gz over here. Now the other thing that could have happened is that the file was updated by NOAA somehow and that they didn't change the file name and we now have a new file with different contents. So if this is different, it's very possible that they have changed something about that bag and you are not facing the exact same data that I am. However, if that's the case, keep going. The data is probably still good, so give it a go. All right, so now let's go ahead and import h5pi. Now if you don't have this command in here and it fails, you can run the command sudo apt get, whoops, I probably want to do a control Z is best, and then we'll type clear. So control Z is the suspend key, and we can type jobs, and you'll see that there's one job in the background. You could do a sudo apt get install, and then you could say python dash h5 pi, press enter, now it's going to want the password. In this case, it's bang, or exclamation point, RT, 2011 VM, if you're using the virtual machine for class. Now in this case, you'll see that I already had it installed, so it didn't need to do anything. And so it's already at the newest version. Now, if you've got a suspended job, we haven't seen this before, so we're going to restart that job. So we can say FG for foreground, and it'll bring it back to the foreground and be ready to go. Now it doesn't redraw the screen, so I tend to hit enter here just to see where we are. And you could type history to get back to a sense of where we are. Now remember, it's these are our magic commands that get run, get replaced with some funny underscore IPs that you can ignore. So we've imported our h5pi library, and let's go ahead and open the bag file. So bag equals h5pi period hit tab and you'll see the options that are inside of the bag top level module and what we want is the file one over here so we can type file and then we'll do a single quote h1 press tab complete that out and we've now opened up our bag file so let's take a little bit of a look at our bag so we'll type bag period press the tab key we'll get the expansion and see some of the options and we're going to use a couple of these. We'll start off by making sure we have the right file. So we'll use file name. And lo and behold, we have the right file. We can also then type name. And it's actually going to tell us where we are in the tree of the HDF5. Now, HDF5 files tend to look like a file system inside of a file. So we'll be getting to access it that way. So let's take a look at some of the other options, bag.items. In there, it tells us what's in this bag, and we see that there's a top level root and called bag root, and it's got four members. Not very helpful, 
uh, we can also try bag.values and in there it shows that there is an HDF5 group with four members. So let's go ahead and type bag.items and we'll try and grab an item. So we want to maybe go look at that bag root. So unfortunately this gets very confusing. This is not the way I'd like to do it. But this will let us access one of the, the bag root. And so this isn't what we're going to do. We're going to use it like the file system. And it actually works very much like a um, dictionary. So we can say bag root. And that will get us the, the node at bag root. And then we can also say items. And in there, we see something that's much more interesting. It looks definitely like we have some data. We have elevation, we have metadata, a tracking list, and uncertainty. So let's go ahead and save our root node. So we'll say root equals bag. And you can actually leave out the slash because the slash means the top level if you'd like. So bag root. And we can say type of root. And it shows us that it's an h5pi high level group whatever that means. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at that root. So we'll say root.name, and we see that where it is in the tree, basically. We can also say root.parent, and it shows us the parent is slash, or the top level. All right, so we can do root.items, and it shows us what we saw before with our major items, and we'll be looking next at metadata. So let's do root.values before we move on. And we can see all of our types. So we're going to be looking at metadata here. And it's a little bit funky because of the standard uh, as it is for our bags right now. What it is is it's an array of strings that are one character long. So rather than being a string of x characters, it's a whole bunch of arrays of one string, which is a little awkward, shall we say. And unfortunately, that's the way the standard is right now, and so we kind of have to live with it. But it isn't that bad since we're in Python and we're able to manipulate stuff pretty well. So we can actually go and grab that metadata out and start trying to turn it into text that we can look at to read about our data. So we can say metadata node equals and root sub metadata data. So we can then just access it like a dictionary, enter, and we can say type metadata node, and then we can also type, remember, whose is a great command in IPython. So we can see what we've got loaded up, and here's our metadata node. Tells us a little bit more about it. So let's see if we can grab out that directly from the top. So we could have also done slash bag underscore root slash. So this is equivalent. So if we type whose, it looks exactly the same. So it's nice to be able to access things either relative or absolutely in the path. Now let's go grab the text out of the metadata. So we can say metadata equals. And then we can say single quote join, and I'll explain this in a second. Metadata node dot value. That's what we're going to run in a second, but we'll start off piece by piece. So I put a pound in front of it to comment it out for now. We can just say metadata node dot value, press enter, and you'll see that we now have an array in there of type uh, S1, so a string of length 1, and we see the bits and pieces. So we can use the string command join, which takes a separator and then a list as an argument and puts those together with a separator in between each one. If we use an empty separator, those that, that's right here with the two single quotes, that means it'll take all of the text and stick it right up against each other. So we'll go back up there, control A to the front, control D to delete that pound, and hit enter. And now let's do a who's and see what we've got in terms of our metadata. So we can see our metadata now is a string and it looks not too bad if you can read XML. And we can also then do a string slice, so metadata, and then we'll take the first 50. So uh, the blank here means 
start at the beginning, colon, and then go through the 50th character. So there's the first 50 characters in our metadata. All right, so we're going to leave that for another video to actually go into what is XML and how to work with it, since that's a topic in and of itself. And we're going to move on to the array grids that are actually the data in this file, the uh, bathymetry, or in this case, it's called elevation. So for that, we're going to need some more modules. We're going to need to get the NumPy library, so impy, import NumPy. And that we're going to use with the is finite and the not a number uh, items. We also need to plot, so from matplotlib import pi plot. Now remember I've skipped using the dash dash pylab option with IPython to make sure it's explicitly clear where I'm getting stuff from. And we're also going to say pyplot.interactive and set that to true. And what this does is every time we do some plotting, it's going to always update the figure right away. Otherwise, it gets too hard to see what's going on and we have some troubles. OK, so now we can say, uh, let's go grab our elevation. So that's in our bag. We can say bag dot, or sorry, root dot items. And we have our elevation. So we want to grab that out. And we can say root elevations. Now we can set that elevation node to be equal to that. Whoops. And there's no S in elevation. So name didn't exist. I had an extra S hiding right in here. OK, so now we can say type elevation node. We can do a who's and see that we now have our data set right here. Now, we actually don't want a data set. We want the array value, the basically matrix or grid of elevations. So we can say elevation equals elevation node dot value, who's again. And now we'll see that we've actually got our elevations and ND array. Now, if that's overwhelming, who's lets you search by type, so we'll type who's space nd array hit enter and we'll only get back the nd arrays so we'll use this fairly often to constrain our searches of local variables in our namespace that we've got for our ipython interactive session now let's take a look at our elevation we can say elevation.shape and it's going to return us in here the width and the height is the same as we see right up here in the summary and you can also see that we are using 11 megabytes of data. The total number of bytes is right there. So remember, megabytes and bytes are a little bit different with the uh, power of two issues. We have a 32-bit floating point array with this many elements. OK, so now let's take a little bit of a look into it. So we can say elevation.min, get the minimum value out of it. And we can do the maximum. And now this is in meters, but since we have a, a bag or bathymetry data. And this number is a little surprising. Uh, if you think about uh, elevations, positive is up, negative is down. So when you're on this underneath the ocean, you should be seeing negative numbers typically, depending on your, your datum. And in here, this very large number, or it's actually 1 e, 1.0 e6 in floating point notation, so that's 1 million. That 1 million is actually a marker for cells that have no data. And we need to remove those from the plot. It's not very helpful to have them in there if we are going to do some statistics on that with the minimum and the maximum, things like that. But we can try really quick. So if we say, um, we could try and say elevation uh, and get the the mean the standard deviation, but right now they're going to be pretty much junk. So if we say elevation mean, uh, it gives us a number that doesn't really make a lot of sense. All right, so let's go ahead and convert that into a properly shaped uh, item. So let's, oh, but before we do that, we actually want to turn those things into a NAN that the no data values and we want to make those NANs so that we can then plot it and it will show up correctly. If I plot it now, it's just going to look like junk. So what we need to do is 
replace our elevation with um, a uh, not a number so we can say elevation and this is a fun, funny mode that numpy has our elevations can actually be set and we create sort of a fake boolean mask that's a true false mask of what's in the in the array so anything with that large value we want to set it to nan and so we basically make a little matrix that goes with it that's true or false of whether or not we want to set it to nan so we can say elevation is greater than, and we could pick a number that's a little bit lower than our uh, no data value. So we could say like 9.9 .9 .9 or 9.0 e, and then we'll say 5 uh, equals numpy dot n a n, which is not a number. So hit enter. This is some a very fancy way in NumPy to do setting of all values <clears throat> inside of our array. So now we can say pi plot figure one, start off our figure one. And with this, we're going to want to actually have two figures. So we're going to want to plot the bathymetry and then a histogram of the values in there. So we're going to set up subplots. So I'll say pi plot dot subplot. And in here, I'm going to want to say one. So we're going to have in the vertical direction one row. And we want two columns. And we're going to start at number one. So hit enter. And now remember, matplotlib starts counting at one rather than the normal Python zero to match MATLAB. Press enter. And if we look at our figure, we now have a blank figure in here. Let's reshape it so it's a little more square, just for grins. It doesn't really matter. And there we've got our figure going. So let's now say um, plotting it. And since it's a 2D array, we can't just use plot. We have to use it like more like an image. So we can say pi plot I am show, and then our data. So we can say elevation, hit enter, and hopefully very soon we will have up oh, there we go we now have our bathymetry in here which isn't like t typical multi-beam bathymetry remember that this is vertical beam or single beam data so underneath the ship there should be just a line of points as the ship drives along collecting data not as pretty as multi-beam data but it can be very effective for building bathymetry grids you then would need to do some interpolation if you want a nice smooth surface without holes. All right, so to take a look at those data values, we'd like to get a histogram of all of the value ranges that we have in there. And right now, if we say elevation.min, we get back not a number, and max, we get not a number. These aren't really very helpful. So let's change that original array, make a new array that's a one-dimensional array without the NANs so that we can then build a histogram off of that. So the first thing we'll do is we'll make a one-dimensional array and we can do that by reshaping our elevation. So we can say elevation.reshape and then we can pass in the size we want to have it be in the first dimension. And what we'll do here is we'll make it the total length of all the number of cells in our 2D array. So elevation.size press enter and type who's nd array. So let's take a peek. So here we have our original data, which is a two by two grid, or a two dimensional grid or array, or if you want to call it a matrix. And here we have our 1D one, which only has one dimension with a lot more cells. But if you notice, we have the same number of elements in both. So that's gotten us going. But we still have those NANs in there that we'd like to get rid of. So we can say elevation 1D underscore finite, meaning that it actually has values, oops, equals, and then an empty list. So what we'll do is we'll loop through all of the values in the elevation 1D, and we'll only put the ones that have an actual number value that's not a NAN. So that would be that, that are actual numbers into this elevation 1D finite. So let's hit enter. And now we'll say for item in elevation 1D and then colon. And what this will do is then loop through all of the elements and return them as item. 
hit enter, and we can then can say if numpy finite and then inside of that we'll then put oops sorry that would be is finite and in there we'll put the item so if that's true we actually have a number then we'll say elevation 1d and then finite for that variable we'll append on our new value so append item we'll hit enter and this is kind of a slow operation because working with big lists it's creating a lot of little Python objects. NumPy's claim to fame is that it does most of the things on the C side so on so the compiled behind the scenes Python not in the interpreter and so it goes really fast. So unfortunately this one goes kind of slow and if we then want to use this in a fast mode we need to say first we'll say who's and see what we got so right now we can say we look here we should see elevation 1d finite and notice its type is a list and that's going to take up more memory and go pretty slow so what we can say is elevation 1d finite equals numpy dot array so this will just convert it into array pretty quickly if it can and elevation 1d finite so if we hit enter it's converted that into a nice array. So we type whose and then nd array to get rid of all that noise. And now our elevation 1d finite is an nd array. And it looks like it's a type float 32 just like it. But notice we've gone from 11 megabytes to 1 megabyte. So it's gotten a lot smaller. Let's see how much of that data is full of NANDs or empty data cells in this grid. So we can say we create a percentage, so 100 times and now we're going to divide by uh, length of elevation 1d so this is the total number of cells that we started with and now we need the number of cells that are NANDs so we can say length of elevation 1d minus the ones that actually had data so we can say elevation or length of elevation 1d finite so that's actually going to give us this number minus this number we can uh, we also have to be careful here we're going to do division by two different numbers and in Python 2 point whichever version as long as you're not running Python 3 division of two integers is uh, going to round and give you an integer so in this case we're going to have a number between 0 and 1 we need to make at least one of the two things that we're dividing by be a float which will cause the whole thing to become a float so we can say float here Hopefully you followed all that. And I'm going to go ahead and press enter and we should see a percentage. So here it looks like 90.4% of the data in this grid is no data. So it's mostly empty space. There's not a lot of information in there. It's only 10% full of actual bathymetry data. Let's go ahead and change our subplot and see if we can make a histogram with this. So we'll say pi plot subplot and now we're going to say 1, 2, so that was the rows and columns, and we're going to move on to the 2 section. So this should basically put a item right here. We'll hit enter, and now we have a blank one in there. And let's go ahead and see if we can do a histogram. So pyplot.hist, we'll then pass it our elevation 1d finite, and from that we can then um, say bins equals 50. Now remember the number of bins in histograms can be very important and change quite radically how the data looks. So enter. It tells us all the bin data. We don't actually want to look at that. We want to look over here and see a nice histogram. And let's try a couple different bin sizes. So we'll try 100 bins and 200 bins. And now we'll go back and take a peek at our three different histograms with diff it's the same data but different binning and we'll see in here that we've got our 50, our 100, and our 200 and we can see that our data is running between minus 17 and 9 meters with an average somewhere in the middle around minus 14 or so and now that we have a 1D array without 
any NANDs in it, we can actually start asking some statistics questions. So we can say elevation 1d finite dot min, and should be the same value, our minus 16.99. And we can say max. And we actually get a much more reasonable value now. We get minus 8.88 meters. We can also ask some other interesting things, like we can say what is the mean value of all this data. It's minus 13.8 meters. And something that isn't terribly important here, but we can ask the standard deviation of the data. And we see that that's 1.3 meters away from minus 1.3 uh, 1, or 13 meters. And with this, we now have a view of our data and our bathymetry. And it should give you a sense of working with HDF5 files and pulling out the different layers in Python. It's much more flexible than with the command line HDF5 library with H5LS H5Dump. Thanks for watching, and the future videos will cover looking into the XML metadata and doing a little bit more with that.